Hello and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Hardcore. In the last episode, I built this home for the alleys, and I didn't just do that for no reason. No siree! I wanted the alleys because I plan to use them in my next project. Although, I will be honest, it is very entertaining to watch them dance in here. I actually wanted the alleys so that I could build myself a new wheat farm. But Whistler, you already have a wheat farm. No, you silly you. I used to have a wheat farm, and I swapped it out for carrots because it stopped giving me wheat pretty early on. The wheat in this bee farm actually just goes straight to a villager breeder now. But here's the thing. Wheat is now the most valuable crop in the game, because you can use it to craft other blocks. Hay bales are the obvious one, obviously, but the other ones are target blocks, which can be handy to have for redstone, and the other is the new building block added in 1.19. Packed mud. Now we can craft packed mud using one wheat and one mud block. So if I want to have a supply of packed mud, I've got to have an actually productive wheat farm. One which doesn't just get converted to bread and used to create baby villages that I then send to die from my lack of need for them. I've actually already used a little bit of packed mud in my frog farm over here, but it's only made me conscious of the fact that I have next to no wheat. And I don't want to be a wheatless whistler. Hey, how did you escape the froggy hole? I swear, I tried to make the froggy hole as enclosed as possible in an attempt to stop runaway frogs. Like, this cave is the only way in and out for them. The exit was supposed to be difficult. Ah! Now for packed mud, I'm also going to need a supply of mud, which is, uh... I don't have that. I haven't found a mangrove swamp yet in this world, so the only way for me to get mud is to use a water bottle on dirt. I'll probably make a proper farm for that at some point in the future too. But wheat is the main limiting factor for me so far. And it's not just my base that I'd like to use packed mud with either. I'm also interested in using it in my deep dark ancient city project. And I'm not too keen on making much more progress over there until I have satisfied my current yet rather muddy desires. Ah, the deep dark ancient city. I feel like I've cursed myself with this project. I already had one ongoing mega project, and this one made it too. It should be a lot of fun doing stuff here in the future though. Like I want to convert this city into a thriving community of free roaming villagers, all doing their respective roles in society. This is basically going to be my Sim City project. Anyway though, as everything is so dark and colour in here right now, I was really hoping to use packed mud for the streets and paths here, and swap out the dark, blackened deep slate. I want this to be a city that is currently lived in, and I think packed mud paths will be one of the best ways to signify a currently lived in civilization, and that's why a man needs his wheat. I've already picked out a good spot for the wheat farm too. It's going to go on this little bit of the mountain, in line with the tower over there. This mountain is a little bit in the way though, like, wow, it could have considered what I might want to build in the future back when I first generated, but no. It went ahead with it anyway. How inconsiderate. Sorry Alice, I'm gonna need your water for a sec. Thank you very much. You're a star. You know, I feel a bit weird building a wheat farm right now. Like I can just imagine people going, Oh wow, Whistler is on his 71st episode of his Let's Play series. He must be doing some pretty epic endgame stuff, right? And you'd be right for thinking so. But no, here I am. Building my wheat farm. Uh, what episode is this again? So this is my new wheat farm. I hope you like it. I'm kidding. We're nowhere near done with this thing. And I have a pretty cool build in mind to go with this. Oh gosh, no, not the phantoms. And I have some interesting blocks that I want to use in the interior as well, like yellow terracotta, moss two, copper three, many logs four. Oh, I might need to farm up some more oak. That's not good. I haven't used my tree tubes for a very long time. Like I actually can't remember the last time. Oh, was it just recently? Oh no, I feel like some of the things I do in this world are blending together. That's not good. I'm beginning to forget the chronological order of things. Clearly I've been brain dead mining netherrack for too long. I need to finish digging my nether hole ASAP, I think. It's getting to me. Actually, I think I'll smelt my yellow terracotta. I like the way the glazed version reminds me of the sun. I'm also going to want a little bit of red nether brick. That's a block I don't think I've ever used in this world. So that's fun. And what's the point of having an overpowered gold farm if you don't want to build with gold blocks every now and then? 
I'd also like to have four different layers for our wheat farm and to separate them properly with the alleys. So with that being the case, I'm going to need wool between each layer. This way I'll know that the note blocks that I use will control the alleys on their specific layer. I want each layer to be pretty colourful as well. In fact, you might be wondering why I've chosen some really weird blocks. But I'm actually trying to make use out of colour theory here. I found a colour theory wheel online and I want to try and see how I can use it for the different interior layers of our wheat farm. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you're interested. I basically picked a few colours and tried to find blocks in the game that would complement each other according to the wheel. And I'm hoping that it'll turn out pretty well. Since I have the frog light farm now as well, I'm going to be using frog lights to light up the wheat farm itself. So let's get to finishing the first layer of the farm. We're going to use the yellow glazed terracotta and the red nether brick for this one. So here's the first layer. I think it looks pretty good. There's a lot of red and orange in this one, but each layer is going to be different. And I want there to be a good visual indicator for which level of the farm you're looking at. And using different colours is an excellent way of showing that. We've got our wool ceiling in place as well, which is how we're going to separate our note block signals from each other. We don't want to confuse our alleys after all. Speaking of the note blocks, I actually need to put one in the back for this layer. So note blocks are really interesting when it comes to alleys. Normally if you give an alley an item, they'll look for the same items in the near general area and then deliver them back to you. But if a note block plays nearby, then the alley will deliver their items to the note block instead. And that's going to be very helpful for this farm. Without this note block, the alleys in this farm will be struggling, trying to give me personally my wheat. And we don't want that. And we can also separate which note block alleys are trying to get to with wool. As the noise signals can't travel through wool. And then in order to collect the wheat and put it into storage, we're going to need hoppers next to this note block to pick everything up. We need a clock to activate our note blocks in this farm as well. And I think we're going to use the good old reliable Etho Hopper Clock. Alleys need a pulse every 30 seconds, so I think 40 items should do the trick. Our farm isn't going to be particularly useful without a farmer villager to farm our wheat for us though, so we're just going to hijack the output of our villager breeder here, and hopefully we can get them into the farm without too much trouble. Oh no, there's a small child! Uh, get in the minecart please. I'm not ready to take you over just yet and I can't have you just running around. There we go. So we should be able to just send our villager straight in through the middle there. Once it grows up, they'll be farming wheat until the end of the world. <laughs> they will never escape. Alright, come along little guy. I hope you're not allergic to wheat because you're going to be looking at nothing but wheat for a very, very long time. Next I'm going to need some alleys. We're going to have one collecting wheat and one collecting seeds on each layer. Now if you could just come through the door please, that would be great. Come on! This is why I have a wall made out of trap doors. This is supposed to be an easy process. Just come through the door already! Ah, finally! If I could just shove these two alleys into this farm, that would be great. Ah, thank you for coming in of your own volition. Just ignore the two leads forcing you to come in. Yes, yes, this was totally what you wanted. Nothing but wheat for eternity. Now I've just noticed that the note block isn't being played like it's supposed to. What's wrong with our clock back here? Oh, I forgot these were supposed to be sticky pistons, weren't they? Silly me. Does that work now? Yes, it does. Excellent. I love it when a plan comes together. So that's the first layer of the farm done. Once the villager grows up, we should start producing wheat and I'll be Wheatless Whistler no more. So on that note, let's build the rest of this farm up, shall we? I've got a cool idea in mind, and I want to show you all what it is.
and welcome back everyone. I hope you all enjoyed that time lapse because I put way too much time into building this thing. And it's only a wheat farm. I wanted to drive home that this building is a wheat farm from the outside, so I made sure to add lots of these cool little wheat boxes under the windows. But I've got to say that this was totally worth it. I feel like this build really fills in a big void in my base, and it suddenly feels a lot more filled out now. But the walls ended up being too close to our other buildings here, so I ended up using the entrance to our bee farm, which is something I didn't plan at all at first. Yeah, the build ended up being more of an expansion to an existing build than a brand new one. But that's okay. I had always planned to have a connecting bridge here anyway, because that finally gives us an official access route to our sugarcane farm in the second layer over there. It's also got really close to the melon and pumpkin farm as well, but there's no interior for that, so there's not actually a connection there. Well, no interior other than the room our skeleton pal lives in. So, how do we enter our wheat farm? Well, we just have to go through this room here, and you can see that everything looks normal so far. And then just over here, BAM! A new door has appeared. This is our entrance to what I have decided to call the Hall of Wheat. Oh, do you like that name, Invincible Boy? I thought you would. Anyway, we go through here, and this is our interior. And this is actually one of my favourite interior designs in this world. I really wanted to drive home the wheat theme, so we've got wheat growing all over the walls. We've got little tables here as well, because I was actually playing around with the idea of having like a wheat restaurant or something. I just wish I could have gone further with that idea and had some tough golems holding wheat or bread over here in the corner and they could reanimate and serve you your wheat at the table. But alas, the Minecraft community voted for the wrong mob yet again at Minecraft Live this year. The tough golem came last! You cruel, cruel monsters! Why didn't you vote for it? It was such a cool mob, it would have come in any colour you wanted, and you'd have been able to stack them on top of each other like a totem pole. Oh man, I could have done so much with a cool little guy like that. Anyway, down here is the Hall of Wheat itself. It's my new storage system for crops. I really love how this room turned out, but my only wish is that I could have included mangrove wood. But yet again, Every wandering trader who decides to show his face just refuses to ever have it on offer. Anyway, this chest here serves as my storage for seeds, because who knows, maybe one day I'll want to build some giant wheat fields or something. I've got a bone meal chest just here too, because I've actually just added a third alley into each layer of the wheat farm, because I noticed that the villager kept on composting stuff, and I'd keep walking by and seeing like three pieces of bone meal just lying on the ground waiting to despawn, so I thought that we should start collecting it instead of just letting it go to waste. Anyway, back over here we have our chests for our crops. Most of it is wheat, since that is now the best crop in the game, and we actually have almost two full double chests of the stuff already. I have also started sending over my carrots, potatoes and beetroots over here, which will allow me to store a lot more of them, and I'll be able to compost the excess, which I wasn't actually able to do before. We do have a lot of chests for wheat here, but since, you know, Wheat is the best crop in the game now. I feel like one day I might like to make use out of a lot of wheat. You never know. I might put up a poll asking what you all think is the best crop just before I put out this episode, by the way. Just to see what everyone else thinks. What on earth? Is my storage system seriously flashing its chest at me? But just be warned, if you don't say wheat, then you're wrong. It's just got so many uses now, even outside of food and the others are still just a thing you can only eat. Anyway, let me show you my chandelier. Do you like it? I love the gradient with the candles here. Going from yellow to plain to white just looks so good. We can also see into each layer of the wheat farm in here as well if we so like. Each and every one of them has been decorated with its own unique colours using the colour theory wheel that I talked about earlier. And I have to say, I quite like how they turned out. I think I should try and make use of that wheel more often. Also, I feel like these walls on the side here are a bit plain, so I might come back here later and add paintings, just to spice them up a little. Oh, I just love the fact that we can watch the farm in motion here too. Like this little guy has his wheat, and he's got to rush over to deliver it to the note block. And over here we have our exit to the bridge outside, which is our new official way to get to the sugarcane farm in the tower over there. After building this so long ago, I have only just now created a way to get up here. I had to just fly in before. 
and that's not something I feel is a good design. There needs to be a way for any of the citizens in this town to get up here, so I had to find a solution, and that solution ended up being our new bridge. Not that we really have any random citizens just walking around in this town, they don't really do that. Everyone living in this town is part of a farm themselves. And just down here, we have our brand new custom dark oak azalea trees. I am so happy with this little area turned out. It's especially good at night time because the glowberries just give it a really enchanting feel. And there's no torches or other light sources in the floor here, so the lighting just feels perfect. I love it. I'll be sure to show you once it gets dark. I also made a couple of changes to the entrance of our old mineshaft here. They're only subtle changes, but I do think it looks a lot better and more natural now. And you might notice that our bridge here has a big hole in it. And that's on purpose. One thing I've been trying to do with my base is to include areas that you can fly through, so that you can basically practice your elytra flying. And the bridge there is extra difficult to fly through because there's two layers of fences, and they're both slightly taller than they are visually, just to add a little bit of extra challenge. Ow! I'd like to put an actual elytra course here in the town at some point in the future once I've developed it a little bit further. I think it could turn out really well. Buildings and structures that you can fly through are, in my opinion, certified awesome. Ah, here we go, it's finally night time and this is how our new custom trees look. Oh, I love how I can play around with different lighting levels now. It can be so good for times just like this. Anyway, I said I wanted paintings, so we're gonna add paintings. Are there any 3x5 paintings? I guess not. Okay, let's go for two 2x2s. Two twos. I think that will look good. And then on this layer, we'll go with the slightly smaller ones. And I still have a couple left over, so let's add them to our pillars here. Are there 1x1 one one paintings? Ah yes, that's perfect. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about this building is that once again, I challenged myself to try and include every single wood type in the game within the interior here. Just like I did with my farming area over here. Except this room was built in 1.15.2, so there's no netherwood or anything like that. But this room was made just now. And you might be thinking, Whistler, you just said you challenged yourself to use every wood type. But there's no mangrove wood. Yeah, well, I'll try and include that just as soon as the wandering trader agrees to sell it to me. But until then, I can't. So for now, that will have to wait. Which is a shame, because I do think that mangrove wood would fit in really well here. Unfortunately though, this entire build is very flammable and will burn when it eventually gets struck by lightning. So I have to add one of our weird little lightning rod antennas to make sure that doesn't happen. I think I'd probably cry if this thing burned down after all of the time I just put into it. <laughs> it would be a nightmare to have to rebuild everything again. And while I'm at it, the frog farm needs a protective lightning rod as well. Just a little something to scare the frogs with. Since I now have an actually good source of wheat though, I can add it to the rest of my crops that I can sell to my villagers down here. Oh yeah, that makes even more emeralds for me. Now it's time that I went back to working on the nether as I have reached the end of my tether. I must fully remove the final netherrack landmass in this episode, or I will go netherrack crazy. And I have no idea what will happen if I go netherrack crazy. And to be frank, I don't want to see what happens when I go netherrack crazy. That could be a crazy time. Anyway though, after I saw just how successful our TNT bomber array was over here, I think I need to use the same device to blow up as much of the remaining netherrack as possible. The bar to battery is within the strike zone though, so I've got to work out a way to protect it. Let's just contain the whole thing inside of a netherrack box. Then we'll just cover the top with lava, dock out the sides, and voila! We now have a TNT proof box containing the bar to battery. That farm is now safe. So then, Shall we get on with removing the netherrack from the final side of the nether hole? Yeah, let's go.
And welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. The TNT bomber array did its job and wow, <laughs> is this a big moment for me. I've been removing all of the netherrack landmasses from the nether hole for a year and a half now. And I have finally, finally finished that process. All that's left to remove is the nether fortresses, then the lava oceans. And then our blank canvas will finally be complete to build upon. We did accidentally blow up a big portion of the great red glass wall, but that's totally fixable. Oh, we've got fire in the gold farm. That can't be allowed. Ow! Ah, we got it that time. Also, we won't wait for that fully blank canvas before I start building upon this project further. I think we'll be starting that properly as soon as I have the world download out for episode 75. Then it's all guns blazing to make this project the coolest hardcore nether project that ever was. And that is going to be so awesome to experience and share with you all. Oh, I still need to fix the floor here too. Oops. So we have here our netherrack chest monster. And you know what? I have no idea how much netherrack there is in here. <laughs> Some of the chests are lava buckets, but most of it is just netherrack. Do I have a need for this much netherrack? Nope. But I could still take that opportunity to show it off. Since we have reached an important milestone for Project Netherfalls though, I think we can update our planning board. Though we haven't fully dug out the entire nether hole until the lava oceans are gone. But I think I can still mark how far along we are in that department with the lime colour rather than green. And we also have a frog light farm now too. Although we don't have an exterior just yet so I can't colour that green. Just a sec, I need some yellow dye. Ah, there it is. I just need the one piece. And that's the frog light farm all yellowed up. Fantastic! We are slowly but surely making our way through the different things on this board, aren't we? Now you might have noticed a random box of crying obsidian over here, and that is actually housing a zombie piglin that I had to rescue. This is one of our old pumpkin pals, and he was in the blast zone so I had to protect him somehow. Also, you might have noticed during that time that I totally blew up my blaze farm. I just completely forgot to protect it. I protected the bar to battery, but not the blazers. And this is the one that's not repairable if the spawner blows up. Luckily though, the spawner did somehow survive. But wow, am I lucky that the damage wasn't too bad here. I think the TNT dispensers directly above happened to run out of TNT just after blowing up the glass. So I'm lucky I didn't have any more in there or I might have lost the spawner. And that's a horrible thought. I'm very fortunate then that the interior is also mostly untouched. Other than the ceiling over the enchanting setup over here. So the repairs will be quite simple. But wow, it could have been a lot worse. Also, will you be quiet please? These blazers are way too loud. Anyway, I am so happy to say that the digging process of this project is done. Because after spending that much time digging a nether hole with a diameter of 401 blocks, it was beginning to get to me. This hole is way too big of an undertaking for one person to do in a reasonable amount of time. But I kept going with it, and I have finally come out the other side. I've shown to myself once again that my commitment to a project knows no bounds. Anyway, thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!